As Russia's war on Ukraine continues into its 37th devastating day, five members of the Ukrainian parliament were visiting Ottawa, meeting with MPs and ministers to press the Canadian government for more help as their country struggles to survive the Russian attacks. Maria Ianova has been a member of the Ukrainian parliament since 2012, and she joins me now from the foyer of the House of Commons. Madam Ianova, first of all, thank you very much for speaking with us, and welcome to Canada. Thank you so much. It's my first visit to Canada, but unfortunately on a very sad event. Yeah, that's, uh, well, the important thing is your message and your, 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 your discussions with the Prime Minister, the ministers and the MPs. Let's get straight to it. What more do you need from Canada? Uh, thank you for your question. First of all, uh, the war has been started and Russian aggression has been started in 2014. But of course, uh, 37 days, uh, the full escalation and invasion uh, has been started. And we really appreciate all the high ranking meetings, what we had, with the prime minister, with the ministers, with the uh, parliamentarians, with the senators. And of course, we um, are very thankful and grateful for all the support which Canada has already done, but we need more. That's our main message. And if we are talking about um, sanctions, we need more. If we are talking about humanitarian aid, uh, we are sure that first humanitarian aid is a weapon because we have to um, save our civilian people, especially who are in blocked towns and cities. And uh, also regarding humanitarian organizations, we also need Canadian leadership to be in a you know, full capacity of humanitarian organizations on the ground. Because unfortunately, after 37 days, uh, it's not enough and we are not able, I mean, together with uh, international organizations to provide these humanitarian corridors. Uh, I can tell you my story that I visited Zaporizhia last week and I saw all these people and children especially who were wounded during humanitarian corridors. So after all this disaster, when we when they were in the shelters and basements, mm -hmm. uh, they were uh, starving. They had no water, no electricity, no he heating and utilities, and they have been attacked during these humanitarian mm -hmm. corridors. You mentioned humanitarian aid, and you said that that military aid is is a first step. Uh, your colleagues, and during your press conference uh, this morning, you, you, all five of you stressed the need for more military aid. Now, we've been told in Canada that what we've been sending you is more or less run out. We've run out of the weapons that we've been sending you, like anti-tank missiles, grenade and rocket launchers, and other munitions. But your colleagues and you were asking for other weapons, heavier weapons, like tanks and armored vehicles and, and howitzers. Is that true? Uh, first of all, uh First, what we need to protect is air. We understand that uh, we cannot get now no-fly zone, yeah. but we can have our Ukrainian uh, no-fly zone, and we have a special weapon and equipment uh, to protect our air, and not only for humanitarian corridors, but also for our infra critical infrastructure. Right. You know that uh, uh, more than uh, 700 uh, infrastructural uh, objects have been damaged and ruined and uh, that's also a question how to defend our nuclear power pl uh, plants. Mm -hmm. It's also a question and when we are talking about heavy weapon, yes, we are talking about offensive and uh, defensive weapon as we think that it's the only one way how can we defend, not to attack, mm -hmm. to defend our people, our nation and uh, to to kick out Russian troops and their weapons from what our kind, territory. What kind of an answer have you gotten from government officials here in Canada with regards to heavier weapons, such as armored personnel, carriers, howitzers, mortar rounds, things like that? Uh, we are sure that we have been heard and uh, we were told that Canada will stand with Ukraine. So we We'll, we're just looking for results and action, so uh, to, 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 to do more. Okay, um, you, at your press conference you also mentioned financial aid, and one of your fellow MPs mentioned a special financial instrument that you've been told that Canada was working on. Can you tell us any more about that and what Canadian officials have told you uh, about that? When we are talking now about short uh, period uh, strategy, of course now we need uh, help to our state budget. And uh, second, uh, it's long 
period strategy, it's long term strategy, it's probably more about uh, also like land lease act mm -hmm. and also uh, like to open second west front like it was during second world war because uh, uh, economy is suffering. I mean uh, really we, we, you see how the whole nation is united. You see how the whole institutions are united but of course we need resources for this and Putin knows that we are like running um, running out also of financial resources. Okay. That is why we are asking for more sanctions. Uh, you know, from 333 banks, not only six banks to to, to, to switch off from uh, mm -hmm. SWIFT, but also another. And of course, we see the leadership here uh, of Canadians because you were first to, who provide embargo on oil uh, mm -hmm. and gas. So we would like you to be like an example for other Western countries and uh, I also I would like to say that on behalf of Ukrainian nation I can tell you that uh, we are not only MPs of course we are volunteers and we are mothers and now all children all Ukrainian children are our children and that is why we would like to protect them all uh, and uh, we, I know that uh, Canada has 1,400,000 Ukrainians and uh, during all the centuries uh, we know why Ukrainians uh, had to uh, leave Ukraine and to go to Canada and other countries because Russian attacking us during centuries and that is why today is a historical moment to defeat Putin and to defeat him at all and he has to be punished in international tribunal and to you know to 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 uh, carry responsibility for all that war crimes what he has provided on our land because we just want to be sovereign independent part of european family and part of nato okay on that note i want to thank you very much and i want to wish you, you all the best stay safe and you have all of our best wishes thank, thank you. you so much thank, thank you for you. speaking with us bye-bye